I am sitting in a 1999 Chinook Concourse XL, which rides on a Ford E350 V10 chassis. It's got about 176,000 miles on it. It's running really well, not bad for a 22-year-old rig. And uh, Nola really enjoys the sofa. Welcome to Odometer Dave. We spent three late October days at Kentucky's beautiful Cumberland Falls State Resort Park. And in this video, I'll give you a tour of the sports car of motorhomes that we traveled in and talk about some of the pros and cons of this vintage Class B+. And if you're interested, the current owner of this Chinook might be open to selling it. So visit odometerdave.com and use the contact form to send me an email and I'll put you in touch. The site also has a companion blog post for this video. There are two 12 volt power sources here on the dash. Um, a cigarette lighter, remember those? Very comfortable. There is a power seat. Um, the controls are here in the front um, and in just, I think, eight different ways. Um, and also under the dash, there is a switch here to turn on the air suspension. There's a power mirror that has uh, a compass in it. Up above here, there are controls for driving lights, a vehicle boost start. Uh, you can start up the generator from here and you can tell whether or not the coach batteries are being charged. This dashboard also features an aftermarket beverage mate, which are cup holders. The idea is you would use this switch to indicate hot or cold, and it would heat or cool this chamber. Unfortunately, these openings are too small to hold our water bottles and coffee mugs. In the passenger seat, we are currently storing all of our bed linens. Storage for us was a real issue in this RV. There is a good amount of storage, but it's small access points. I think that'll make sense in a little bit. Um, but this has worked out well for us. Now moving into the coach, up above the cab, there's this storage. It's nice and deep. We could actually probably put our bed linens up in there pretty easily. Um, all of the storage areas have um, this automatic rope lighting that comes on, which is really handy. Unfortunately, all of the support struts um, have failed um, on all of the upper cabinets. So either we would want to replace that or um, find out a different way of supporting the cabinets. There's the original stereo, which still works, a VCR. If we had some VHS tapes, we could play something. Interestingly, up here is a solar control panel, and it does indicate that the solar panel up on the roof is charging. I think this is really intended mostly to keep your house batteries topped up. Over on this side, there's a 15-inch LCD TV with built-in DVD player. Um, this would have been, in 1999, I think, really, um, really ultra-modern and, and hip. This is the thermostat for the air conditioning unit, which doubles as a heating unit. There's a heat strip inside the AC, which just kind of takes the edge off on a cold day. We've been using that a lot. It will also turn on the propane furnace um, which is down below. We don't have any propane um, in the unit at the moment, so we haven't used any of the gas appliances. Up above here, there is a fantastic fan, uh, which works really nicely. We've used that constantly to, for ventilation. And then there's storage along the sides. Again, it's a good amount of storage, but these um, access holes, <laughs> the opening, the, the openings are rather small so it's hard to get large stuff in there. Um, I replaced the battery in the clock and it's working fine now. Over here on the right, or on the left, there's more storage. Up in here, there's also a crank for the Weingard antenna, the TV antenna. Um, I don't think it has a cellular antenna or Wi-Fi because this was 1999. One thing I would immediately want to fix if I owned this is this entire storage unit is starting to fall away from the ceiling. So I would want to secure that with screws, you can see. Hopefully it won't fall on uh, the rest of our trip. There is a dinette that converts into a bed. Um, you just, um, I won't do it. There's a table leg that swings in, you pull the table down, and then you bring the cushions over top. Um, it's actually really comfortable. 
Um, below that, there are two storage areas. This one also has the propane furnace back in there, so it doesn't go all the way in. Um, there are seat belts on both sides of the dinette. I think you could have six people um, traveling with you. I don't know where they would all sleep, though. And again, there's storage under this side of the dinette. That's nice and deep. Now, with the dinette converted into a bed and the sofa pulled out into a bed, you get a full king-size bed. And we slept with our heads towards this end, um, though the first night we slept this way, which was not as comfortable. Um, but there's room for us and the dog. But you lose the center aisle, of course, so it's a lot more difficult to get to the cab. And you may have to climb over your partner to get to the bathroom in, in the middle of the night. Um, there is a little bit of storage under the sofa, but most of this area is taken up with the freshwater tank and the hot water heater. All of the windows have these blinds which are a little tricky to operate. Um, they're sort of a top-down, well, they're not top-down, they're, they're bottom-up. Um, if you bring them down first, there's this is sort of a see-through, and then if you pull down from here, you get more uh, darkening. Um, the side windows also have this really heavy tinting. I would want to remove that right away. I can't really see the, the light outside, and I want more light. Uh, maybe I would feel differently in the middle of summer in Arizona. One thing I really wish that this RV had is awning-style windows. You can see a little bit of water damage here um, when this window was left open during the rain, and that's also dripped down onto the seat cushion. Um, with an awning-style window, you, that would help prevent that. And also this, it's just, I never am confident that it's entirely secure. On both sides, there are switches for this accent lighting. Um, not, oh, I didn't know this fluorescent light worked. <laughs> the fluorescent lights in the ceiling aren't working. The fuses seem to be fine and the bulbs seem to be fine, so I think maybe the ballast in both of these units needs to be replaced. This is the original Chinook manual materials. There is a little manual for the Ford chassis and then some original brochures. There are also some service receipts. I was happy to see that new tires were put on a little over a year ago, and that cost a little over $1,000 for six tires. There's also instructions for how to operate the bed, wiring schematics, plumbing schematics. Um, this is just a treasure trove. Unfortunately, the one thing that's missing is the original purchase receipt. I would love to know how much um, the original owner paid for this. Let's talk tanks for a little bit. 37 gallon gasoline tank, 36 gallon freshwater tank, six gallon water heater tank, that's pretty standard, a 36 gallon gray water tank, and then just a 15 gallon black water tank. I should also mention that the motorhome overall is 21 feet, four inches long. It is seven feet, seven and a half inches wide. The interior height is six foot three. And I keep bumping my head, I'm six ones, and there's, there's places all over this rig to bump your head on. Um, and the exterior height with the air conditioning is nine feet, 10 and a half inches. So it's nice to know you're under 10 feet. Chinook offered the Concourse XL in three floor plans, the club lounge, twin bed, and dinette. We have the dinette option. The twin bed gave you two separate beds and the club lounge gave you the sofa with two club chairs that swivel. Not really sure which is the best option, but I'm guessing the club lounge might have been the most versatile. If you're enjoying this video, take a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. It really means a lot to us. Leave us a comment if you have questions about this Chinook. We'd also love to hear from any Chinook owners. A good dog. On this side of the galley, we have a Dometic RV microwave, which has a carousel in it. Works great. We've used it. Um, right below that is this range hood, which also doubles as the control panel for monitoring the tanks. There's a monitor for the black tank, the gray tank, freshwater tank, which we have not filled, and the propane tank, which we have not filled, and it looks like the house battery is fully charged. There's also a switch here for the water pump, which we have not used because we, we haven't filled the freshwater tank. It's also a hood light and a hood fan. Below that, we have 
a three burner gas stove, which again we haven't used because we don't have gas. And there's also an oven, which could be used for storage. Below the oven is a small storage area that's taken up uh, partly by the wheel well. Uh, there's a coffee maker in there and some tools. And next to that, below the fridge, is another storage unit where we have a few things stored. The refrigerator is a two-way uh, propane and shore power. It won't run on battery, uh, which is important to know if you don't have propane in your tank. So when we are driving down the road, I don't believe this is actually cooling. Um, when it's connected to shore power, it cools very well. We turned it down to the, its middle setting of three because it was freezing things in the fridge. All right. Over here on the sink side of the galley, we have a double-sided sink, stainless steel. This is not the original faucet. Um, I would want to replace this faucet with a pull-out model so it's a little easier to keep things clean. That is a pantry cabinet where we have most of our food. Um, spice rack, uh, which we've been using to keep all the dog treats. Down here, some more controls. There's a switch to turn on the heated blankets for the storage tanks to keep them from freezing. There's a water heater switch. There's a 12 volt power port. And this is a thermostat control for the underfloor heating, uh, which I, I'm not sure that we've had on. Um, the thermostat I can hear come on, but I, I don't know if it's actually working. There's a fuse panel in here. And there are a couple drawers. There's also a cutting board, which I cannot open. I have tried and tried to get this to come out, and it just will not budge. Um, while I'm down here, I think we should talk about the carpeting. I think the interior of this motorhome was designed by someone who has never gone camping or RVing. I don't know why you would put beige wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in an RV because it is constantly dirty and it is constantly wet. I think if we owned this, the first thing we would do is pull out this carpeting and put down some sort of nice vinyl uh, flooring. Um, I don't know how that would work with this um, underfloor heating mat. Um, We'd have to figure that out, but um, I would love to be able to just sweep this out. Uh, we don't have a vacuum with us, and uh, you really need a vacuum or a wet vac or a steamer vac to keep this uh, carpet clean. Now it's time for the bathroom. This is a wet bath. Uh, you won't really be able to follow me in because there's no space in here. Uh, there's an integrated sink, which is kind of cool. Um, it's all fiberglass uh, shell all around. There's a curtain that would come around here to protect the door from getting wet. And the idea is that this shower hose would screw in right here and you would pull up this control and it would activate the shower. Um, there is an exhaust fan. Unfortunately, the fan blades are missing and the motor doesn't work anymore. And these lights are exposed. It's a little scary. Um, I think th this entire fan unit would need to be replaced um, immediately. My big problem with this wet bath is it's just too small. Um, I barely fit in it to do, you know, the normal day to day. Haven't taken a shower in here because we don't have hot water, but it's really difficult to imagine taking a shower in a bathroom this size. There's just not enough space to turn around. It's high enough for me, but it, it, there's just not much room. It's very difficult to stand up and sit down, if you know what I mean. And at the back of the motorhome, there's a nice size coat closet, which is full of coats and um, other stuff at the moment. Um, carpet lined, very nice. And there's also a carbon monoxide detector and a generator switch, um, which shows 784 hours on the generator. Who knows when that started? A couple hooks on this side, some light controls down here, and a fire extinguisher. And a mirror. And a mirror. It was raining the first night we stayed in the motorhome, and unfortunately, the design of the back door can lead to water leaks, which is a major issue. You can see some of the damage to the carpet in the footwell, and there's also some damage to the wood trim. 
The door itself also has some water damage, but I think it's mostly superficial. I'd want to replace this lining though for sure. You can also see that the door frame angles in at the top, which makes it even more likely for water to intrude. And I didn't get a good shot of it, but someone drilled holes in the metal frame above the door, maybe to mount a backup camera, and those definitely need to be caulked. There is a storage locker here, but to access it you have to lower the spare tire. Above that, there's an outdoor shower. And you can just level your rig by moving this handy leveler. Now we'll climb the ladder and take a look up top. There's the small solar panel up on the right. And now on the passenger side, you'll see venting for the refrigerator and the generator. There's an AC power outlet. And that's the furnace exhaust. Up above there is an awning, which we have not used. And the front end of the RV is in amazing shape. Some broken running lights up at the top, but other than that it's just perfect, no rust. Not bad for 176,000 miles. Here on the driver's side is the water heater exhaust. There's a storage locker in here. And it's got a single house battery on a pull-out tray. And over here is where I'm storing the sewer hose. I'm not exactly sure what this pump is, but I think it might be for the air suspension. We've got water hookup, the electric hookup, fuel tank. Back here is the storage for a sewer hose, but our sewer hose didn't fit. And next to that is a black tank water flush. Down below we have the tank outlets. Back in 1999, Chinook marketed this as the sports car of motorhomes, and that V10 has plenty of power. It can even tow up to 8,000 pounds if you want to haul a boat or other toys. And again, the current owner might be open to selling it, so if you want me to put you in touch with them, visit odometerdave.com and use the contact form to send me an email. You can also check out the companion blog post for this video. Thanks again for watching. Hit that like button and be sure to subscribe.